Hello friends, I am back with another useful Qtip feature which got released in the latest enhancement of Power BI in February 2021. In this edition, we are going to see how we can implement object level security inside a Power BI model. Object level security can be thought of as an enhancement from the earlier available row level security feature which has been there in Power BI for quite some time now. Using row level security, we could define roles and attach a series of filter definitions to the roles so that when the members are assigned to the roles, the members access will be regulated based on the filter restrictions that we have defined. Now we are going one step ahead in object level security where the access to a particular object can be regulated based on a role. So we could define multiple roles within the Power BI model and we could restrict the access to one or more objects to each one of these roles based on our business requirements. Now let's see how we can use this new feature and restrict the access to some of the objects to a set of people by defining a role for that. To see this in action, let's open a sample Power BI desktop sheet inside which we have added a source, which is in this case a SQL Server source, which includes a few tables that we'll be using in our analysis. And we have also added a couple of sample reports to show the sales data and the stock data from the tables. So we have a set of tables storing sales information and a set of tables storing the stock information. So now let's see how we can create and manage an object level security based role. For this, go to modeling tab and click on manage roles. This is exactly same as how you create a role for role level security. You can create a role. I'm going to name it OLS test because that's what we are going to do using it. Once you create it, that's all that you need to do inside Power BI Desktop. At this point, you don't need to add any other information. Just create a blank role inside Power BI Desktop. Now comes the important part where we'll be making use of an external tool which is quite popular called the tabular editor. This can be accessed from your external tools once you have installed and registered it within Power BI. This is a nice little tool which has been here for quite some time. I'm used to use for this for a lot of things like uh, creating calculation groups and similar kind of requirements. Now we are going to use the same tool for managing our object level security roles. So click on tabular editor. This will automatically open the tabular editor in a separate window. Once the tabular editor opens, make sure that you have a recent version of the tabular editor installed. Otherwise, it might not support exposing the various roles that you have created. So what the tabular editor does is that it will expose the various objects created inside the analysis services tabular instance, which Power BI is using on its backend. So you could see all the tables inside your Power BI model as well as the role that you have created inside this. So this was the role that we created now. Now we are going to manage this role and add a few restrictions or definitions for this role. For that purpose, if you go inside the role properties, you can see one property for role level security and also there is another property called table permissions where you have the OLS enabled later information being shown. So this is where you need to set your OLS related restrictions. So click on that to expand and you could see all the tables that are being managed by this analysis services tabular instance. You, you can see all the tables which have already pulled into the model plus a few local date tables which Power BI will use for its internal operations for date related analysis. So that's now of our interest. We'll be concentrating on these objects which we have pulled inside. So I'm going to restrict access to this roles to only the sales related tables. So I'm going to, for that purpose, for every table, you can define two associated property values. It can be either none or red. Red means that table can be read by this role. None means the access to that object is restricted. So I'm going to set it 
none for stocks and also for sales staffs I am going to set it none for all the others I am going to set it as read which means all those objects will be accessed by this role anyone who is a member of this role and stocks and the sales staffs will not be accessible so you can set it for every object like this so once you have set all of them you can save it and you can exit this tool automatically the changes will get reflected inside your power bi model so now that you have set the role correctly you can come back go to the modeling tab and there is a option there to check for a particular role so you can click on that view as and when you select on OLS you can take a look at the list of tables available on your field list before that currently you can see all the tables including production stocks the moment I put the context on OLS text automatically your table list will have these two tables disappearing production stocks as well as see you can't see production stocks now and also you can't see sales staffs now which means that those two objects have been hidden from this particular role because you have already restricted access to those objects and automatically if you see one of the report is still working fine the other report has thrown an error this is because if you see the report the report contains one of the field from a table which is currently having restricted access if you originally see this table this had a quantity column this quantity column came from production stocks and because we restricted the access to this production stocks for this particular role the moment you put the context to OLS test role this report is going to error out and if you try to fix it it will automatically remove that quantity field which that particular role doesn't have access to. This is how you define an OLS based role through which you can restrict access to one or more objects within your Power BI model. Once this is created, the next step for you is to deploy this to the Power BI service and from within the Power BI service, you can map one or more users to this particular role, just like what you are doing in the case of role level security. There is no difference there. The only difference is in the case where you manage these roles in this case at the time of creating this video the managing of OLS roles can only be done from within the tabular editor so make sure you are getting a new installed copy of tabular editor and registering it within your power bi before you go ahead with creation of OLS based role and adding one or more object restrictions to it before we wrap up, let's look at the advantages that this new feature has on offer for us. Now, in the current scenario, if you want to create a set of reports which is targeting only a set of users within your organization, you can't do that unless you create separate separate set of reports for them with each having their own data models. For example, suppose if you are planning to have a single report with a single data source which contains all the core tables of your organization there is every chance that there might be some tables which will have some data which you want to restrict itself from some of the other set of users as an example take the case of a typical retail setup where you have some tables about uh, salespersons their commissions and similar kind of their performance related factors being sold you don't want the analysts or anyone having an access to the model who is working in another department to have a look at this. Even the same goes for the HR tables as well. As of now, the moment you give a centralized model to someone, there was no way by which you could restrict access to one or more tables by means of defining roles. Now with this new feature object level security, you will be still able to use a single model itself share it to a variety of users but have a different roles defined for them and restrict their access to one or more objects so that you can also make multiple set of users use the same model like say analysts from sales and marketing department can use their regulated tables they can see their commissions and similar kind of uh, data whereas a person from another department's might not be able to see any of the critical data which is of relevance to salespersons. So this makes it easier for you not to replicate data or make data redundant across multiple models just for the 
sake of restricting access to one or more tables. In that sense, this will help us save a lot of effort when trying to set a different set of data model for different set of users within your organization. I hope you found this quick tip useful. We'll be meeting you soon with another similar interesting quick tip. Feel free to follow my posts and subscribe to my channel and press the bell icon to get the notifications. Thank you.